This is Mardi Gras 2019. Broadcasts live from Hargrove Controls and Automation in downtown Mobile. Laissez les bon Tom Roulet, and we are letting the good times roll on Hargrove Controls and Automation's balcony. I'm Tara Reeves with Gulf Coast today, and I'm joined with two extra special guests. Darwin Singleton, our mobile man of Mardi Gras, is not here, but he's here with us in spirit. I'm joined with some of my very special friends. Dan Brennan, uh, 95 KSJ and iHeartRadio, and also UTV 44 high school uh, football game of the week. So I'm seeing a lot of my production friends yes. and Tara here tonight. <laughs> and of course, Shelby Mitchell from 95 KSJ and iHeartRadio and Gulf Coast Today. Yes. And, uh, you know, we, we do a little show together every single day. We have for several, several years been together. And uh, it's exciting to do this together with Tara, mm -hmm. with our partners, uh, television partners here for Mardi Gras. Yeah, yeah, we love this. It sure is. So it's somewhat of a deja vu for Dan, only he wasn't able to do this last year. Unfortunately, right. it completely rained on the MOT's parade last year, and so they had to parade on Monday, which is Lundy Grawl. Right. So we're super excited to see them tonight. Going to be, of course, we're at 6 o'clock. The parade won't come by us until about 6.30, so we're going to have some extra special guests coming up. But tonight's theme, in all honesty, it really applies to us because Mardi Gras has gone just like that, and time flies when you're having fun, which yep. is very appropriate. And you and I were kind of looking at some of the different floats that we're going to see tonight. Board games, really unique. You're going to want to see those floats. Did you guys have uh, favorite board games growing up? I liked Monopoly. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm you know, basic, mm -hmm. but it was always fun. Yeah, she's, uh, even in real life, she borrows for money from me all the time. <laughs> you're not supposed to mention that part, really. <laughs> it's like Shelly, kind really, of embarrassing. You don't have any cash yeah. again tonight? Yeah, so, pretty much. <laughs> do you send her to jail? <laughs> I do not send her to jail. No, I don't do send her to jail. Do not pass Do not collect $200. <laughs> I always thought that the most disheartening game out there and I it would crush the spirit of little children was uh, shoots and ladders shoots, yeah you get up Did and up lose, and up you, lo you yeah. lost at shoots and ladders I was not a champion of that <laughs> game Bless. and you think you're on the verge of winning and suddenly it's a shoot and down you come I know I know mm -hmm. so it's like all a game of like it doesn't teach children how like no. to you scheme it's in different chance. things but monopoly there is a little bit of scheme there is a little bit See? of a roll mm -hmm. of dice strategy there is Money. strategy it mm -hmm. teaches you a lot yeah you my, should have played monopoly Dan. I should, well I did some yeah in all honesty <laughs> honestly though Shelby did you ever finish a game of monopoly because yeah. in our household I don't know in my 27 years of playing that I've ever <laughs> Ever finish a complete no, game of Monopoly. We did, we did. We were like, got to do it to the end. Mm -hmm. Yeah, pretty okay. much. Yeah, and Monopoly so, and puzzles. Puzzles, yeah. Never get difficult. completely done. <laughs> Those are like a tag team thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Now, yeah. now, Jenga, that's my go-to. Okay, you're that's good fine. at Jenga. All right, well, let's focus now on, of course, the mystics of time. We've talked about how there's going to be a lot of different board games that are parading. Here's some interesting facts. So the mystics of time is actually Mobile's largest parading society. And then they have two of the most iconic carnival images. We have Father Time, of mm -hmm. course, for the mystics of time. Yes. And then have you guys ever seen a real-life fire-breathing dragon? Well, of course, yeah. every year. Yes, for the MOTs. <laughs> We're going to see Bernadine yes. the dragon. And mm -hmm. they've been parading for 71 years. They have 480. 85 members. They're going to have 45 marshals tonight and 19 floats. There will actually be four full length dragons. So yes. I am so, so, so excited about that. Mm -hmm. yeah, Are you big Game of Thrones fans, either of you? Yes. Okay. I'm not really, but this, but this is really one of the most iconic parades in Mobile. Probably maybe one of the most. Uh, Highly attended tonight with the weather as nice as it's going to be. Yes. They've got, uh, like you mentioned, 16 marching bands. So there's going to be a lot of entertainment on the streets. It's going to pass us by right here. Mm -hmm. And you at home will make sure you see every bit of it. Yeah. Yep. And, yep. and Dan was mentioning another one of our friends who actually broadcasted Mardi Gras with us last year, Ariel. He's, he's seen some footage of, like, a lot of things being thrown on the Hargroves <laughs> controls and automation. He's a little gun shy, in I all am. honesty. So if anyone's watching and can somehow communicate to the MOT, you definitely need to aim at Dan Brennan. Okay. He's, he's a little he's a little scared. We're gonna we're gonna break him in. We're gonna talk right him through it and walk tonight. him through it. Yeah. And as I mentioned before, of course, we've been broadcasting a lot of Mardi Gras parades. The time really is flying as we're having fun. If you can remember February 21st, our first parade, wow. Order of Polka Dots, and then the very next day, February 22nd, thankfully, Order of Inca, none of our parades have been rained out. Then February 25th, we had a two-for-one, Order of Venus and Order of Many Faces, mm -hmm. and then we... 
had on the February 26th. 26th, we had the Lachies. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then the uh, Mystic Stripers on Friday night. Yeah. Yes. So much fun. What a great, great coverage. Uh, March the 1st, da da, last night, Crew of Columbus, and then MOT's two nights. Yeah. Uh, the fourth, of course, as we wrap things up, Infant Mystics, Order of Dubs, and the big one yeah. on Mardi Gras Day, Mamga. Yeah, and of course, NBC 15, WPMI, we're going to be covering that from 10 to 2, so you're going to want to stay tuned. Kim and Greg are going to be on the Hargroves Controls and Automations balcony covering for Fat Tuesday, but then Darwin and myself, we're going to be back in action for the MAMGA parade, so stay tuned to UTV 44. We definitely want to see you, and we always have people that have a lot of fun. Now, I've mentioned Hargrove Controls and Automation several times because we have to plug our sponsors. They're the reason that we're able to broadcast to you every single year, and we know that our viewers love it. I always get stopped at different places today. I was at an antique store in Daphne, and they were like, we love the parade coverage. <laughs> you and Darwin making comments about our hats that we wore. <laughs> and then we have, of course, Navigator Credit Union. They have multiple locations in Mobile and Baldwin County. And then Shelby has a very special friend at our other sponsor. That's right, the Boot Store. They are awesome, and they love to be involved in the community. And so we appreciate them being a sponsor as well, Eastern Shore Shoe Hospital and the Boot Store. And we have mentioned time and time again, MOTs. We can't hype them up enough, but before the parade rolls right across Hargrove Controls and Automation, we're going to get the opportunity to speak to some very special guests. Dan's going to be standing in, doing a couple of interviews. I get to do my friends at uh, Fairhope Brewing. Shelby, Ooh, who are you speaking with? The Underhill Family Orchestra. They are so great and very talented band. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll find out about uh, what's going on at the History Museum of uh, Mobile right now. Very much a Mardi Gras theme, yes. theme exhibition. Bigger than an exhibit. It's uh -huh. an exhibition. <laughs> I just learned that. All right, guys, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back for the Mystics of Time coverage on UTV 44. Downtown Mobile, the Mystics of Time Parade on UTV 44. My name is Dan Brennan from 95 KSK. And we've got uh, Shelby and Tara down the other way. We'll check in with them just a little bit. Right now, before the Mystics of Time make their way here to us on Government Boulevard, we've got special guests to fill some of our time. And a very special guest is uh, Lainey Kosick. Kosick, yeah. I've been working on that. <laughs> and uh, Lainey, uh, of course, is with the History Museum of Mobile. Talk mm -hmm. about what you do there and why Mobile should be very proud, especially during this Mardi Gras season, of what you, what you all have. Yeah, so I'm with the History Museum of Mobile. I am the registrar, so I work very closely with the artifacts, caring for them and getting things on display. And we right now have a big Mardi Gras exhibition going on titled Parading Through Time. And it really covers Mo, uh, Mardi Gras starting from the Roman Empire all the way to when it arrived in the United States here in Mobile in 1703. That is quite a time travel right there. <laughs> right. And one thing I like about this, too, is there's the ongoing rivalry, I guess, mm -hmm. sort of, with right. uh, New Orleans. And uh, we'll, our friends from New Orleans will say, mm -hmm. hey, we're Mardi Gras. And, of course, we claim to be number one. We're, we're the first with it with Mobile. Mm -hmm. But it's probably a pretty good idea to have your facts straight right. so you can arm yourself in the conversation slash argument mm -hmm. and win the argument. And you can help with that. Yeah, so the exhibit starts with, like I said, with how Mardi Gras started with the Roman Empire thousands of years ago, but then when did it come to the United States in 1703 in Mobile? And then again, Mobile started modern Mardi Gras with mystic societies in the 1830s, which is long before anything happened in New Orleans. So this is a really great opportunity to have that uh, armor of knowledge when you are in a fight with somebody from New Orleans and they say, oh, we have a better Mardi Gras. And you say, oh, well, we're from Mobile and we started it first. And then you have your facts to back it up when they say, well, prove it. And so yeah. this is a perfect example and of you that. can prove it. And not only was Mobile Mardi Gras before New Orleans Mardi Gras, like mm -hmm. you said, it was before New Orleans, pretty much. Correct. yeah. And so it's a parade through time is what it's all about. What are some of the things that we may see? And even for those who think they know Mobile Mardi Gras, they may see part of this exhibition and say, well, I wasn't expecting that, or I didn't know that. Right. So 
What's great about this exhibition is that it's really a homegrown exhibition. Everything's right out of Mobile, right out of our back pockets and our friends and family's artifacts. But we also have things from those 1830s organizations, the Cowbellians. We've got original French sketches of Cowbellians' costumes wow. from the 1830s, and then an array of different costumes. And we really tried to hit all of the major organizations and get their emblems costumes out there so people can see what the tradition is and those emblems that we really love coming down the street every day, including Bernadine. We've got a model of Bernadine on display, so you'll be able to see her up close in person. And just little touches from all the organizations that we could possibly get to explain why Mobile Mardi Gras is special. And as we kind of gear up for the kind of the, 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 uh, the final surge of Mardi Gras on the streets of Mobile, the fact is that this exhibition is going to continue on so if you've got some friends coming in from out of town or even you're a Mobilian or you live on the Eastern Shore and you're just thinking, oh, this might be fun, it's going to happen till when? And what are the hours? So the History Museum in Mobile is open Monday through Saturday, 9 to 5, and then Sunday, noon to 5. So seven days a week you can come see it. And then the exhibition is running until April 20th. So we ran it through the whole Carnival and Lenten season to Perfect. go with the theme and the Mardi Gras and Catholic kind of traditions of this celebration. Awesome. 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 It's a beautiful place, too, during this exhibition and even afterwards. You need to visit the uh, Mobile, uh, the History Museum of Mobile. It's right on Royal Street. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Right across from Mardi Gras Park, not yep. far from Government Center. Right now, Shelby is uh, getting things lined up All with right. our musical entertainment. <laughs> Let's uh, throw it over to her right now. Uh, stuffed animals and being in the parade on the Underhill Family Orchestra is here tonight for our balcony entertainment for Mardi Gras. We are super excited. The Underhill Family Orchestra, That's you guys up. are amazing. This is Steven. He's lead singer. And you guys, now the description of your band is songs that make you cry and that make you dance. Yeah, songs you can dance or cry to. Uh, it's something that we... Uh, we kind of ascribe to when we're writing. We want to we want to be able to write and uh, have, be fun and, and but also be thoughtful and pensive. And I think that's uh, something that sometimes is missing in music uh, that you see uh, in in a more corporatized way. And you yeah. know, we want we want it to be thoughtful, but also still uh, you know dancing and a good time. I love that dancing and a good time. So I'm understanding that one of you, it's your first Mardi Gras. Oh yeah, it's uh, Roy actually. Roy, it's Roy's first Mardi Gras. Oh my goodness. Yeah, Roy. Uh, Roy hasn't <laughs> spent a lot of time around Carnival, so he doesn't know he doesn't know much about it. But he's uh, excited to do it. I think. So excited. Yeah. He's so excited. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like he is pumped. Have you caught any moon pies yet tonight, Stephen? Uh, I actually did. There was one guy that was walking in the middle of the street and just threw me a moon pie, and I said, thank you so much. I love it. Yeah, yeah, it was super hard and terrible, but I loved it. <laughs> okay. And thank you, whatever your name is, you <laughs> nameless hero. You reveler. Nameless okay, hero. really quickly, what are you going to do for us first? Uh, we're going to do a song called Nebraska Town, and then we're going to do a song called O'Collar. Okay, yeah, let's do it. Absolutely. Thank you so much. The Underhill Family Orchestra. Come on, Westbound, take me home a little while now till I die. Come on, California coast, just a picture in my mind. Come on, all you able men, throw your caution to the wind. Come on, every soldier, sin, lovers, brothers, sons, and friends. Yeah, I can see you coming across the open plain. We got a thunder here that keeps away the rain. And so go on, got the bags up. We're getting on that train.
scared and brave the same Everyone just say your name Come on, every taxi train Shuffle off, you can't be late Don't make your mama proud Load them up there and shoot them down now We'll tell the kids you were Side of what we all believe in Don't let the women now Let them know you're coming home soon Here's to those your goodbyes Of love, you're the one I'm missing. We should dream, it's well worth wishing. Light a candle on the man to take off both your golden sandals. Wake up, babe, moonlight's beaming. Dream of wishes, well worth dreaming. While you find your worth in love, I'll climb the dance worthwhile. Wake up, babe, moonlight's beaming. Dream of wishes, well worth dreaming. While you find your worth in love, I'll climb the dance worthwhile. Make some monsters under the bed, as pretty as the sunset. Make so skeletons of our class. Downtown Mobile at Hargrove, and uh, we are going to be enjoying the 71st Parading of the Mystics of Time. Time flies when you're having fun, and we're having a lot of fun. We'll also have some information on the way, too. We're going to be talking with uh, special guests that are here on behalf of Hargrove and Best Robotics. So we'll talk about that great program here in just a few. Tara? Yeah, Dan, guess what? We're talking alcohol, but we're also talking how we're helping the environment with Brian and two extra special guests, Mary McCarthy and William from Fairhope Brewing. Don't go anywhere. You want to hear this interview. Welcome back to our UTV 44 coverage of the Mystics of Time. Now, before the break, we actually got to hear the Underhill Family Orchestra and Brian from Fairhope Brewing. You guys actually know one another. How is there a tie there? Yeah, they, uh, they have actually played at the brewery probably four or five times. Uh, they're big fans of ours. If I had known it was them, I probably would have brought a bigger ice chest because uh, there have been some requests from that side over there. I'll tell you what we love. Aside from the incredible beer and the beers on tap and everything, you guys make it fun at Fairhope Brewing. You guys have a trivia night. So I thought it would be fun to kind of do an MOT-themed trivia night if you're okay with that, Brian. All right, bring it on. Okay, so first thing that I have is what are two of the most famous icons during the carnival season here in Mobile? Here in Mobile, it has to be the uh, MOT's Father of Time and the uh, Dragons, especially the Vernadine. Perfect. And I understand you have a beer somewhat related to that. We did a, a Mardi Gras event. We do Mardi Gras in July, and we actually had three beers that were kind of similar that we called uh, Vernadine and Vernadine. So we we, uh, we honored those guys. And then what is tonight's theme, Brian? Tonight is uh, Time Flies When You're Having Fun. So uh, I expect to float with beer making going on because what better way to have fun and see time fly than making and drinking good beer? I completely agree. Okay, and then last one. Who is Mobile's oldest parading society? I believe it's the parade tonight, the MOTs. The MOTs, that is correct. He's a winner, winner, give him a beer. Okay, what I love about you guys' beer is not only is it incredible, but you guys are going like environmentally friendly, Brian. How are you doing that? Exactly. We have just switched over to cans uh, about a month ago from bottles. We'll be in cans exclusively. Uh, they're better on the environment to make. They're recyclable, great for the beach, the boat, golf course, you know, everything people like to do down here in the south. Yeah. 
because I know whenever I go and I may have a drink when I'm at the beach, you, you can't bring glass on the beach. So I love the idea of this. Okay, and then you have two extra special guests. We have William and a three-time veteran. She's trying to take my job, Mary McCarthy. Boys and girls, what is your favorite part about Mardi Gras season? Because you've been coming to the parades, especially here on Hargrove Controls and Automations balcony for quite some time now. Um, my favorite part is catching stuffed animals and being in the parade on Tuesday, yeah. the day of Mardi Gras. And might I just mention, so our producer Jared, he has a daughter who plays like every sport. Well, Mary McCarthy also plays sports. How many soccer games, games did you play today before coming here? Two. And how many goals did you score? Two. Gosh. She's winning too. But this is like a winning family, guys. Okay, William, what is your favorite part about Mardi Gras? Um, catching stuffed animals and catching um, football. Oh, I love it. I would. They're going to catch a lot of stuffed animals tonight because the MOTs have been practicing their dumbbells and they're going to get it all the way up to the balcony. So I hope you guys brought some protective gear. I think they're going to use some of these uh, Fair Hope things to kind of block the, the parade throws. Okay, Brian, back to you. Talk about some of the different drafts that you guys have on tap at the brewery. Yeah, well, we have uh, 15 things on, at all times. Uh, a lot of things you can only get at the tap room. Uh, in cans, we have our pale ale, our IPA, our golden ale, and our amber. So those are the four that are going to be in cans year-round. Uh, but again, anytime you come in the brewery, you can go one week to the next and find something totally different on tap you haven't seen before. What do you guys have extra special for Mardi Gras? And then I understand in July you do something similar because this is the birthplace of Mardi Gras. So it's we got to celebrate it more than once a year. Exactly. We did uh, this year. We did a hurricane wheat beer, uh, a king cake beer, and a moon pie beer. So we we covered all the all the bases, uh, dark beer and light beer either side. So uh, they've been very popular during the Mardi Gras season. And when we think of the tap room, we usually think like drinks flowing, but sometimes you guys have some music flowing. How frequently can we hear live music at Fairhope Brewery? Uh, we have music probably five or six times a month at least. Uh, any given Friday or Saturday, there's a great chance you'll come in, see some great local acts. Uh, you know, a lot of guys that you'll see around downtown here in Mobile and a lot of folks that are on the Eastern Shore. But we, we try to support the local artists as best we can. And then, of course, you're a local. Do you guys also sell some of your own brews elsewhere, Brian? We do. We, we distribute across the state of Alabama. Uh, we're in the Panhandle of Florida and the coastal Mississippi. So we uh, we have a good reach. It's as far as we need to go right now. We're uh, focusing on making a good product out in these cans and hopefully selling a whole lot down here in Mobile and Baldwin County. And then lastly, before I let you go, Brian, I asked the kids their favorite part about Mardi Gras. And we love having Brian here with us for our UTV 44 Mardi Gras coverage. He does a great job each and every year, so that's why we invite him back. What's your favorite part about Mardi Gras in general and then specifically being on the Hargrove Controls and Automations balcony? Uh, well, in general, I enjoy watching the kids enjoy Mardi Gras. That's the fun part for us. Like, I did it when I was a kid. My parents brought me here, so it was exciting to bring them out for parades. Uh, and being on this balcony, uh, my wife actually works with Hargrove, so uh, we're familiar with this balcony, and it's a, a great place to catch stuff without having to uh, scrap too hard for it. You can, just got to keep your eyes open. So Fairhope Brewing is a family-friendly organization, and then, of course, Hargrove Controls and Automations is too. And, Dan, I understand you have someone, a part of the Hargrove family as well, that you're about to speak with. Yeah, I've got uh, some special guests on behalf of Hargrove, and really, when you consider the engineering aspect of what this company is, uh, our guests here, Enzo Finizola with Mitsubishi Poly Silicon, correct? That's right. And, of course, also Sarah LaCroix with Faith Academy. But you're here to talk about Best Robotics. So... For those out there, and iHeart is very involved with Best Robotics, so we know, working at 95 KSJ and iHeart Radio, we have a, a clear idea of what it's all about, but if someone doesn't understand, what is it, Sarah? Robotics is a program that, Best Robotics is a program that all different kinds of students can come and participate in, whether their strength is something that is more STEM-based, where they are into engineering and technology, or if they have different strengths, which might be marketing mm -hmm. or um, even cheering along at the robot. Uh, we have several different aspects of it anyway, but it all comes together in the end to um, promote different uh, topics that are related to different things this past year. Our event was current events and it taught the students how to um, be better leave a better thumbprint on our environment excellent so. excellent uh, Enzo you are the and best robotics by the way it's an amazing event it's almost like a pep rally Super Bowl state championship game all at the Mitchell Center it's as much excitement as you can ever hope to find in what is basically a science event you're part of the excitement I didn't realize that you are the voice of best robotics so when i hear that voice that's you that's me okay yes, it is. and at being uh, with the uh, mitsubishi and in, in, in that um in, in, in the engineering side of things there's a lot of reasons that, that you guys want to get behind this right 
Absolutely. So, I mean, th these t these type of programs uh, always are great for us because they're the future of who is going to work for us. And Mitsubishi, the Airbuses of the world, and mm -hmm. whoever that may be, even Hargrove, of course. And so the program like this excites them. Uh, we put on a big show, but there's a lot of work that happens well in advance of that. Uh, and even after the competition here in Mobile, when they go to regionals, and uh, of course that's where Faith Academy this past year came in first at, at Auburn. That's in the unbelievable. Regionals, so. you, you had an athlete on your, on your robotics team that actually won a state championship in baseball. baseball. And talk about what he had to say about well, that. Well, whenever we came back from our robotics competition, the school was phenomenal, and they actually had the students out in front of the school cheering us on as we come in. So we had the windows rolled down for all of our buses. We have about 115 students on our team. Wow. So we had six transit buses back-to-back -back and coming in, and they were cheering and yelling. And I had the five of the robotics drivers in my bus, and one of them was um, a baseball player, and they had won a state championship for five last year anyway and he was like wow state championship baseball or best robotics I feel like you know this is this is really living the, the real dream yeah and it was really cool to see some of the other students that were in there as well getting to experience those same things it's got to be great for you I know you've got a passion for these young people these young minds I know it starts around middle school but to see them develop what their skill set is and then watch it culminate at the Mitchell Center in such a, a, a grand way uh, and one thing I noticed, by the way, I've seen teams help other teams. I've yeah. seen if, so, if a team has got a problem with the robot, actually a, a kid from this school will come over and, and, and lend assistance. So there's competition, but there's also kind of a fraternity there, fraternity sorority. Absolutely. There's a lot of teamwork. Uh, you know, one of the prizes they get and compete for is a, uh, um, a team type atmosphere and, and the spirit of the uh, spirit. And so. You know, they're, they're looking at it from an aspect overall rather than just their team themselves. So they go in and they help each other. Someone having trouble, they need to borrow something, batteries and so forth. Um, they're always helping each other. Yeah, I love that. And, and now it's been going on for how long? It's uh, 17 years in Mobile so that's been going you'd on. You'd have to imagine, th it's not a stretch to think that some of these young people that were in Best Robotics 17 years ago and since then now probably work in similar fields and maybe come across each other many years later as, as professionals. Absolutely. I actually have a really unique experience. One of the teachers that assists me now, she's one of my co-teachers, was my first president of robotics at our school. And so she went off to University of Alabama and pursued engineering for a while and then actually chose to come about the education path and um, is teaching math and science alongside me and is also helping me from just an educational perspective of helping other students pursue their dreams in STEM careers or whatever they choose. So the, the event itself, the big event that I've been bragging about, the uh, best robotics event at the Mitchell Center is a, is a fall event. That's correct. What happens during the off season and are these young minds still being sharpened and, and involved in, in things kind of like during the off season? Sure. So we also have an off season that uh, a smaller number of schools participate in, mainly because of timing and so forth. But uh, it's about 15 or so schools that participate. And it's a miniature version of the big competition day. They, they don't necessarily do all the pieces and parts of the big one, but mm -hmm. it, it keeps them honed and tuned. Uh, they enjoy it. It's uh, held out at the University of South Alabama in the engineering department. And uh, they have a lot of fun. And, you know, you got to keep your, your skills honed, and that's the best way to try and do that. You know how to, you're also a coach as well, correct? Yes. So from a, an educator's standpoint, what do you think that Best Robotics offers these children and in, in the end, these young people that, um, uh, what do they take away from it and just how important is it to them? Oh, it's incredibly important. The experiences that they have at the event, the game day event, or even the things and friendships that they've learned along the way. Enzo mentioned earlier how sportsmanship is a huge part of the best robotics. Mm -hmm. And for us in particular, I remember my first year is starting out and thinking, seeing all of these 
huge schools with these fantastic robots and realizing I am just in over my head. <laughs> and I will never forget some of the kind-hearted mentors. Um, Robin Fenton was one of the ones who even came alongside me and said, it's gonna be okay. But just the spirit of just helping, the, the main goal for all of this is the students and just helping them kind of find themselves. And especially for me, it's a special challenge for females that are interested in STEM careers. I want them to find somewhere where they can be really um, comfortable and find just a new, a whole new approach to what they might be doing for the rest of their life than what they did before they joined the program. If you could talk about that real quick, I guess the numbers are up for, for the young ladies involving themselves in, in this sort of study. I am always trying to have um, the ladies get more involved. Of course, in the first few years that we did it, I thought, oh my goodness, there's boys everywhere with their dads, and <laughs> I'm outnumbered. And uh, anyway, but it, it's changed. <laughs> I've actually done more recruiting for females and it has been really interesting another one of my robotics drivers this year is a varsity cheerleader and uh, she said you know I think I could do this I said I think you could too and That's I would awesome. love to have you and she was I'm telling you she was fierce when it came to the driving competition it was really just a whole different um, viewpoint I guess just to have another we've had only a couple of female drivers on the team but it really was just impactful for her well i know from my heart radio's perspective that we really enjoy our association and have in the past with the, the robotics the event itself october at the mitchell center uh, find out about it get a chance to get there and enjoy it and watch these kids watch their minds work and watch their spirits really soar we thank you yes. both for being with us today thank you for having me tonight thank you. okay shelby wants to introduce us to a little live music up here at hargrove let's do that right now Do you want to introduce all the, look at them cheesing back here, they're so cute. You want to introduce everybody, Stephen, and including yourself? Yeah, sure, so my name's Stephen. Uh, right here we have Roy, Roy, Roy! Hey. This, uh, hey. And then this is Joel back here, this is Ben, and then uh, sunglasses at night is Joe, yeah. <laughs> You're extra cool, dude. Oh yeah, oh yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah. it's uh, Noah Gunderson with uh, sunglasses on, I think. Very cool. Yeah. So uh, what do you have coming up as far as gigs or shows or tours? Sure, we actually have a show coming up on the 30th, uh, not of February, but of March, at Callahan's Irish Social Club. It's gonna be a really fun time. And then, uh, you know, we're always on tour. We have uh, three regional tours up into the Northeast and then also to the West Coast coming up. Uh, we're, we're trying to drop an, uh, an album in the middle of next year, so we're working on the demos for that. We're going to have a couple videos probably. Uh, but, yeah, we are always on that grind. You know? Okay, where can people get your music and find out more about you guys? Sure thing. We're on uh, every streaming platform, and uh, so that means Apple Music, Spotify, uh, Amazon Prime, all that, all that good stuff. So if you want to find it, just search the Underhill Family Orchestra. You can find us. We're also on Facebook. We're uh, at Underhill Family on Twitter. You know, very cool. Yeah, we're everywhere. I'm working on getting you on iHeartRadio as well. We want to so, be on iHeartRadio. Okay. We want to be on iHeartRadio. <laughs> we'll see what we can do about that. All right, brother. Uh, what do you have for us coming up next? Uh, I think we're gonna play uh, our single off the album when the trumpet sounds. Okay. So yeah. take it away, the Absolutely. Underhill Family Orchestra. Christ, I'm coming home. When the trumpet sounds in 
Jesus in this hour is Jesus Christ. Well, there's only a few more miles now. I'm taking it as fast as I can. I hope when I see you by and by, you'll reach out and grab my hand. And Lord, thank you for your patience. I tell you, thank you. The trumpet sounds in this soul is Jesus Christ I'm coming on. When the trumpet sounds in this soul is Jesus Christ I'm coming on. When the trumpet sounds, I see that angel again. Jesus Christ I'm coming home. And tell me that you love me. And tell me that you need me. Don't tell me I'm no good at all. And if I look before I leave, if the Lord my soul shall keep, if my body falls asleep and never comes back to oh i'm on my way to you and lord thank you for your vision i tell you thank you for your thought when the trumpet sounds in this soul Jesus Christ, I'm coming home. When the trumpet sounds in this old land, Jesus Christ, I'm coming. I see you in the sanctuary. Your arms red wide, you dressed in white. I go move, but my feet won't take me. I can't go home with you in this time. I see you in the rich man's garden. Your eyes were closed and you're down on bended knee. I go to you, I say beg your pardon. I can't go home with you. Take me away through sickness or ill or anything else you want. Take my hand and hop in the truck. We'll push our and look and go far, far away.
All right, great job, guys. The Underhill Family Orchestra. Oh my gosh, you guys are just killing it tonight. Thanks. We uh, we're getting a lot of time to play. I think it's fun. <laughs> yeah, we're kind of waiting on the dragon, but that's okay. That's okay. Sure. Hey, everybody down there seems to be loving what you guys have going on. Yeah, and I did think you so. you dedicated a song to your buddy down there? Oh yeah, one of those songs is dedicated to. Hold on. Colin. Colin. <laughs> song's dedicated to Colin Byrne. Oh, nice. Very uh, cool. He he. Uh, am I allowed to say he threw me a beer? You am can I say that, say but that? I do not encourage people to do that. <laughs> <laughs> he, he threw me a beer from the ground to the balcony. Do not do that as law enforcement hates it. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you. For, okay, so again, the name of your latest project and where we can find out more about you guys. Oh, man. So our, our uh, latest project is called Tell Me That You Love Me. It's an album that we created. Uh, uh, we released it in May of this past year. And it's a, uh, what are you guys doing? And it's, right? <laughs> uh, it's created in May, and, uh, you know, we had a really great time making it, and we used a producer for the first time ever. Uh, nice. This is technically our first album, but it's kind of our fourth album, so it was kind of nice to work with a producer and get to do something cool like that. And uh, he's a really good guy, and my theater degree in me tells me that the thing that's happening behind me is very distracting, so yeah. I don't know. You know what? You're probably right. I think they're looking for moon pies. I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up. I will throw it to Dan, who's going to talk about a package that our friend Darwin has put together right now. Take it away, Dan. You got it. Thank you. Double introduction. That means a lot. Thank you. Uh, Dan Brennan from 95 KSJ and iHeartRadio kind of guest. Uh, he, he kind of pinch hitting I got a little bit for Darwin tonight, who was uh, not with us this evening, but he is in a way because we're going to learn a little bit about the MOT Super Float from a conversation and a story that Darwin uh, did in 2018. Check, check this out. Going to a Mystics of Time parade is kind of like going to an amusement park. You know they're going to have a new and better ride every year. And this year is no exception. There's a new ride waiting in the float barn. And as you might expect, it has something to do with a dragon. We have seen this dragon before. He has been our title float for the last uh, probably six years. Says this masked reveler. But this year, the title float has changed. Sure, it's going to bear a new parade title. This year, it's third time's a charm. But there's something else about float number six. It has grown since last year, a lot. In fact, this dragon has grown to twice its original size. It is now over 100 feet long. 100 feet long. It is the, it's our understanding, it is the longest single float in Mardi Gras in Mobile. It is a super float capable of holding 80 plus riders. It's actually two floats joined by a single theme, the head and body of a dragon on the front half, with the dragon emerging from a castle on the second half. Now, to give you some idea just how long this float is, let's take a walk. The length of the float, 100 feet long, remember? Now, this is just half of it right now. Keep going. That's the middle. There's more. <laughs> OK, we're almost there. And... That was a long walk. There's the tail. And like the other dragons of Mystics of Time, this float has a name. Emmett, who was known in this float barn as the Dragon Master. He was re basically responsible for the entire parade for close to the first 60 years of the organization. I think it's almost um, a respect, a reverence. But will Emmett, at 100 feet, make it through the tight turns of downtown Mobile? You'll have to come and see, but I wouldn't get too close to Emmett because like MOT's famous Bernadine... It'll blow smoke and fire also. Really? Yes, sir. We look forward to that as we look forward to the entire parade, 71st parade. And uh, this year, Mystics of Time, their theme is time flies when you're having fun. We're having some fun and Tara's having some fun down the way here at uh, Hargrove with our friends from Fairhope Brewing. That's right, Dan. Time really does fly when you're having fun. And it seems like just a few minutes ago, we were talking with Brian and his kids, Mary McCarthy and William, at an MOT parade. Oh, wait, that really was just a few minutes ago. OK, so for people who are just now joining us, of course, we talked about how you guys are being environmentally friendly with your beer. Tell us how you're doing that. Uh, we are in cans now, as you can see here. Uh, just started out about four weeks ago, and uh, we are switching exclusively to that, so it would be great for all the places that bottles couldn't go, the, the cans now can. So hopefully uh, we'll expand our footprint. 
And we talked earlier, we gave you a little trivia quiz because you guys do trivia at Fairhope Brewing. And I'm not going to put you through that again because you already know all the answers. You aced them the first time. He doesn't need a second time. But tell us all the things that you guys offer in terms of fun because much like Mardi Gras, Fairhope Brewing is like a great atmosphere. It's a fun time to get together. Exactly. That's what we were saying. It's, it is a place that time can fly when you come in there for a beer. Um, and I was just telling you, we had uh, the Blowhouse Band that is in the parade tonight. Uh, and you said in almost every parade. Yeah. Came, we did a Mardi Gras brunch about two weeks ago, and they came and played in the morning in the tap room, uh, and were fantastic. We were, they delivered everything we expected out of them. Question: Do you guys have board games at Fairhope Brewing? We do. We've got a few games. We are, as I said, we are a family-friendly group, so we've got uh, some chess, which most of the kids don't know how to play. We got some Jenga. Uh, we got some games that these kids like to play too. Sorry. Sorry. They have sorry, too. And actually, I'm glad that you mentioned Jenga. Shelby, of course, one of our other co-hosts, said that she's really good at Jenga. Okay, so now I'm going to ask the kids. We mentioned earlier, and Dan and I have talked, time flies when you're having fun is the theme. And we have a lot of board games that are going to be several of these floats, one of them being Monopoly. So I was going to ask the kids, do you guys have any favorite board games that you like to play? Um, mine is Guess Who and Monopoly. Guess Who. Do you play that with William ever? Do you guys play board games together? Yeah, we play a lot. I play with my friends. I play a lot. Mm -hmm. Do you beat William? Yes. <laughs> I, William! I, nobody's ever won against me. Oh, no. That's a hard challenge. Okay, William, do you ever beat Mary McCarthy at any of the games that you guys play? Um, we... I played Rocket League four times and I beat my sister. Oh, oh snap. <laughs> and, video game. and then... My favorite board game is Slapjack. Okay. And guess who? Okay, and speaking of time flying when we're having fun, we were actually having a lot of fun during that commercial break. Mary McCarthy and William were actually showing me some cool dance moves. I didn't realize how old I was, but I guess, you know, as it says, you know, time and change. You guys gonna show us some of your dance moves that you were showing me earlier? There's this new dance. I don't know if you guys are familiar, Dan and Shelby. It's called the Floss. Okay, so take it away, Mary and William. Yeah. <laughs> We've got some Batman dances going on. They're going to teach me how to do this, but for now, I think, Dan, I'm going to toss it over to you, and we're going to, we're trying to keep Darwin here in spirit. I know he wanted to be able to cover the MOTs, but he's not here with us right now. Dan? Yeah, well, he's not here with us right now, but he's more than in spirit because we've got another, as we wait for the uh, MOTs, we know it's going to be a great parade, but hasn't gotten here yet. So let's uh, uh, toss it back to Darwin and a, uh, another package that he's provided for us. Uh, many of you are very familiar with Toomey's, and that's where some of you get uh, everything you want, Mardi Gras-wise, as does Darwin. If you're not careful, Mardi Gras can sneak up on you. So consider this your official notice. There's nothing that troubles me more than to see a disappointed face at Carnival. You know, the look on the faces of less seasoned revelers when they realize they waited too late to score that perfect beat or mask. I call it post Mardi Gras syndrome. For more than three decades, though, Toomey's Mardi Gras has been trying to prevent that from happening to you by marketing what's hot on the parade route. Stephen Toomey says they go all the way to China to do it. Well, see an item that, that that catches our eye and we say, well, could we convert that into purple, green, and gold colors? Which you know. can. Which yeah. oftentimes yeah. we can, yeah. yes. The possibilities are endless, and they become even more so with the advent of those bright but economical LED items. Blinking beads aren't the only flashing throws offered at Toomey's. There are dozens of others that light up the night. New are the lighted jump ropes, which require moves that I don't have, and LED hula hoops that were mentioned earlier that can make sure everyone can see you fail. And in case you missed it, just add more hoops. For the traditional, these are the new stuffed animals for 2019. My little pony, uh, that thing, frog, uh, gator, and seahorse. And an item leaping in popularity are these second-line umbrellas customized for every event. Well, you didn't see one of these at the Super Bowl, but you will find one here. You know you want to look good, but don't you want your house to look good for the party? Pop. Oh, wait, that was a rehearsal. <laughs> it's been crazy this year with the amount of people coming in buying wreaths or LED lights, and, you know, the light up there, front porches. The beads, the moon pies, the hats, the masks, and this thing. See? If you come here at the last minute, you could have a meltdown and come down with a bad case of post Mardi Gras syndrome. So remember, you have been warned.
making Mardi Gras in Mobile. Darwin Singleton, NBC 15 News. Is, uh, Darwin is kind of the Mr. Mardi Gras around here, so it makes a lot of sense. He stopped in with the folks at Toomey's. Just to update you, we are waiting on the Mystics of Time. They've got a br brand new uh, uh, den that uh, recently opened on Government Boulevard. You may have seen it uh, near closer to Broad Street, but it's a, it's a beautiful new den, and I know that they were going to incorporate that a little bit in their, in their start of the parade, so things may be a little bit uh, lax in terms of uh, being on time, but that's okay. We've got plenty of uh, entertainment up here at Hargrove, and as we wait on the Mystics of Time, back to Shelby, and I know we've got a lot of marching bands, but we have a band up here as well. Yes, we do. Thank you, Dan. It's the Underhill Family Orchestra, and they are so awesome, and they're multi-talented. A couple of them, you know, what I was just talking to Roy was marching earlier in the parade, and then uh -huh. some up. You got to go to work later, or what? Yeah, I got to I gotta go to work. Like real work? Yeah, like, I gotta go to work. <laughs> this is work, but this is fun work, right? Well, uh, yeah, I think, uh, I think all work is fun work. It just depends on your, uh, your mentality, right? There you so, go. It's yeah. all about perspective, right? Yeah, sure. I'm working right now. Hey, I love I'm, it. I'm happy to have one. I, <laughs> I hear you, brother. Okay, so describe uh, to everyone who might not know about you guys, sure. what is your style of music? What are you? Uh, well, what we like to say is that we're Southern progressive pop, which is kind of like, uh, you know, progressive pop was like the Beatles and then... Uh, uh, Van Pike and, and that kind of stuff and we kind of do that but we do it in a southern way and I think yeah. it's uh, you know it's different in that way so we get a lot of uh, parallels to like Lumineers and then uh, some people say Mumford and Sons which we're not in love with but it's fine uh, Ava Brothers who whom we love so you know it's nice uh, our first compliment compliment ever was that we sounded like the Ava Brothers with Regina Spector, and that was, yeah, Whoa. it was, no, it was a really lovely compliment, yeah. <laughs> was, I'm picturing that, and, and I do like it. It's, yeah, it's I like of, it. <laughs> and uh, when we started, we didn't have drums. We were a flat four. We had, like, a upright bass and banjo and Whoa. stuff like that. And so for us to kind of, like, take this progression, you know, the obvious, the obvious route was to be more progressive with how we approach pop and stuff. What is going on? These, your bandmates have, they're, they're crazy. They're, are they antsy because they're, the parade's not quite started yet? No, I think they're antsy because they're antsy. <laughs> I think that's all <laughs> they to do it. All right, Stephen, let's, let's, yeah. uh, let's let everybody play so they yeah, can uh, get back to business. I love it. I love it. The <laughs> Underhill Family Orchestra. <laughs> and if you love it's like a river for me. I think it's best I win a hand drown. Oh, there's nothing this love could ever be. So I lay this shield and this sword down. This world worth fighting in Soldiers, arms and legs are sore. My wrists have been bruised from the trying times we do. In this war, it worth fighting anymore. Yeah, I've got to lay down my soul. My feet are heading north, my ears are now my words. Cause what helped me was a small thing that it held strong. If faith is blind, I swear I damn these eyes. If Teddy's blessing, tell me what am I? Shirking now.
One, two, I was in a band from Alabama down to Louisiana, losing every dollar when I thought it didn't matter that the songs that I was singing was the word to wait and paper. Now oh, well, I always got mm -hmm. I ain't got no cross intentions. All I want is you love again. I don't need no big impression. Just show me you're another man. When I come back, be my baby. We'll have it good just the way we plan. We all got worries. We all got pain. We all got stories to tell. We all need time Our frustrations on this mountain to climb intentions all I want is your love again
Up next, we're going to play a song called Tumbleweed and Kale. It's one that's not on our current album, but might be on our next one. And it goes a little exactly like this. gonna stay father's not a father cause he gave you a last name a family's still a family till your dying day all right 
right, well, the buildup for the MOTs is a lot, but we know this parade is going to be lit, literally, of course, for Bernadine the dragon, the fire-breathing dragon, and they could not come soon enough. We've had music, we've had dancing. Now, all we need is just a little bit of national recognition, which Fairhope Brewing has had. Brian, tell us about the New York Times. Yeah, we just uh, recently, the uh, I guess New York Times yesterday ran a travel piece on Fairhope in general. What a great place Fairhope is to live. Uh, highlighted some of our, our businesses there, and Fairhope Brewing was lucky enough to be one of those businesses. So it was, it was very exciting for us. And it's exciting for the entire Gulf Coast. There's a movie being filmed there, and act actually it's based off of a real-life story of a woman who lived in Fairhope. We've heard, you know, seen articles of Jason Siegel. I actually got to see him, ask him how Lily was doing for any of our uh, How I Met Your Mother fans that are watching. And you guys have had some celebrities at the brewery. Right, we did have uh, uh, Casey, I wasn't there, but apparently Casey Affleck was, was there for some of our trivia uh, last week. And so uh, we've, we've seen a lot of people seeing them around town and, and hitting some of the restaurants. And so it's good to see those guys, you know, at least really taking in the town and, and checking things out. All right, well, we are about to wrap things up, and I know William and Mary McCarthy are excited because they were promised that the MOTs were just a few minutes away, and that's actually true now. So we're going to send it to break, but we will be right back, and hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll be able to see the MOTs. We'll be right back. UTV 44 2019 Mardi Gras coverage of the Mystics of Time, and I can't think of a more ironic theme than tonight, guys. Of course, time flies when you're having fun, and we are having a lot of fun, and in all honesty, the time is flying, but we still haven't seen the parade yet. Of course, we're waiting patiently, some of us at yeah. least, <laughs> on the Hargrove Controls and Automations balcony. We're so thankful for them giving us the perfect spot to watch and broadcast the parade, and of course, it wouldn't be possible for us to broadcast the parade if it weren't for our lovely sponsors. And then you even have some friends, Shelby, that are yes. helping us make this possible as well. Absolutely. At the Boot Store, they are a parade sponsor tonight also navigator credit union thank you so much and oh my gosh hargrove controls and automation this balcony is so awesome this is the perfect location it's the perfect location because we have a lot of space to kind of move around of yes. course our own bubble space and you and i were kind of going back and forth thank goodness <laughs> for the uphill family orchestra they did a great job underhill i'm sorry yes, that's okay underhill family orchestra yes. I'm a, yeah, my brain is a little bit you know that's okay we've, we've been done a lot of we've been interviews. go 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 and <laughs> live stuff and so much fun though i love this this is so great this is what mardi gras is all about and yes the underhill family orchestra were great one of those guys is his first mardi gras yep. really yeah yep. mm -hmm. and i think what's ironic too probably not lost on our audiences that the mystics of time are not on time <laughs> but they're, they're that's just, so ironic i think yes. it is and they start out with father time right mm -hmm. but they got this beautiful new den uh that is now on on government it's really gorgeous and i think that that's where they they were doing something special there to, to kick things off so it probably got them to the civic center a little bit later than uh normal but now we can see that it's going to be a matter of minutes probably before we have them here and we're ready yeah usually yes. when you see those flashing blue lights you're in panic and shock but we're seeing them <laughs> and it's we're it's a sigh of relief we're thankful that and i'm sure our viewers are thankful that they don't have to listen to us they can actually see the parade for themselves <laughs> everything that we've built up to this moment That's now right. at exactly 7 15 p.m <laughs> they've been watching us thank you guys so much for staying tuned for more than an hour of listening to us. We're excited to be here and we're excited to have you join us as we broadcast the MOTs. Thank you so much. And yes, we are, we just love this again. Uh, I, I met two new people today and had to, I was very excited to tell them the story about how Mobile is the birthplace of Mardi Gras. They were mm -hmm. like, oh, I said I thought it was New Orleans. Uh, mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, yeah, they're okay. They do it okay. <laughs> <laughs> they try to. I'll tell you what. So speaking of New Orleans, have you seen the uh, raw iron fencing, how frequently the beads are draped yes. over each individual yep. thing? Mm -hmm. Well, as you'll notice, and Dan, maybe you haven't noticed this before, obviously, since you haven't done a broadcast, that's much like how our lights will look. It'll just be draped yes. in beads that's well, and crazy. everything else. Yeah, it's amazing. And, and what almost like uh, temporary stadium lighting is what we have here at Hargrove. 
beaming down to the parade route. Mm -hmm. uh, s s this is so, <laughs> yeah, Jared's truck is like, yeah, well, we, it took us like you know, three days to put them up. <laughs> but the point is that's... 142 zip ties, but go ahead. Hey, yes. Without all these, <laughs> at home, you would not have nearly the uh, the view of the parade. Yes, right. And, and so these lights here, and it, I know that it really revs up everybody on the floats when they get right. here. Mm -hmm. They know the bright, you know, are they ready for the bright lights of TV? Well, there are actual bright lights of TV. <laughs> they and are. They, they recognize that, and we're going to get felt. by the way, to. you're going to have to get all those beads down. They didn't yeah. tell you that, but Dan, yes. that's going to be your job after this is With over. With the safety heart. <laughs> and while we're giving shout outs, of course, Jared in the truck, we have Ray in the truck, and then our camera guys, Ed, Vanya, and then Jeremiah on the street, having to hold, we're just talking, holding a microphone. They're having to hold the heavy cameras on their shoulders. Chris is doing audio, so every time it's in and out, it's a lot of work. They're big, strong men. They can handle it. Yeah, I think sure I are. think our job's a lot tougher, Tara. I didn't know where you were going with that. But we're up, we were dancing around a little bit, obviously, because we, you know, expected things to, the parade maybe to get here by 6.30, 6.40, or so yes but the anticipation itself is yes. about as much fun as the and parade you know what too honestly there's a, some friends of mine were like oh we've done we've done it every day we're just not going to come down but we are going to watch it because we want to see so i'm yes. like thank you so much for tuning in yeah. right beautiful you night don't, you don't have it sure is and you don't have to fight traffic you don't have to fight physically people when you're <laughs> trying to catch the best throws <laughs> yeah and um That's i also want to mention i'm next to shelby <laughs> So don't discount that. Listen, watch out. I'm going to be throwing some bows up here on the balcony to try and take home some moon pies. Because I hear you, girl. I need some birthday presents. Today is my dad and my brother's birthday. Oh, oh nice. Wow. Very March good. 2nd. They share it with Dr. Seuss. Well, I'm looking for some ramen. So <laughs> hopefully there's ramen noodles. And I do like the oatmeal cream pies. Okay. Okay. You can FYI. Say, I already have my fair share of the oatmeal cream pies. I'll take some more of the cookie cream pies. Oh, and yeah. then any banana or vanilla moon pies that you're willing to give well, me. Well, I, I, okay. I, I was out of it for a little bit. But actually, I was typing all of that into my device. <laughs> So yeah. I'm aware of everybody's job, orders, what they <laughs> Thank want. Thank you. Dan, what do you want? We're you being know selfish. What? I just, the, the mystics of time is just, to me, it, it's it's one of the most iconic because of Bernadine, of course. Oh, yeah. And the, it's just getting better and better. It's got that, the, that super float that Darwin did the story on, which is pretty remarkable. Oh, yeah. 100 foot float, which is kind of two in one. That's a huge. We're getting close now, guys. Okay. And we are officially seeing the parade of the MOTs roll through Yay. downtown Mobile. All You're right, seeing the color guard of the University of South Alabama oh, Air Force ROTC. Very nice. Thank you. Go Jags. I'm a proud alum. The theme is time flies when you're having fun. Oh, check out the Army Band. Yes. Very good. There's Army 151st Band. Here we go. Very nice. Hi. I, um, Do you know what song they were playing there? You guys are both radio DJs, but you're country. That wasn't country. Yeah, world, but ladies. I'm so 80s. Hello. <laughs> that was Word Up by... It's, um, it's wasn't a code it? word. Yeah. It was. Word yes. Up, thank you. By Morris Day and the, and the Time, possibly? Uh -huh. Yes. Uh -huh. M.O.T. is coming. Uh, oh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, as Jared said. And first up, there's the emblem. How about this? Wow. I love this. We're very excited, and actually, Shelby, so your son does some cow showing, and so yes. frequently he's out in the field, out with the tractors, yes. and so that's very appropriate for our first float being pulled by a tractor. Absolutely. As you were mentioning, the emblem oh, Here float. we go. They see us now. And and, oh, yes. Hey. Look at Father Watch Time out. there, <laughs> up on the top. There you the go. Float. That was for you, Dan. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Also, he knocked my headphones off. <laughs> I love it. I just need to have wireless, like, oh, it just needs to be plugged into my ear. Well, so here's a band that you're very familiar with, Shelby. Oh, look at there. Go Jags. <gasps> oh, yes. I love it. Let's take a listen. University of South Alabama's marching band. Yelling go Jaguars was Shelby. Sorry. Let's <laughs> get into it. It's an amazing band. If you've not been to a South Alabama football game, you would never guess that the program is that young just because of the band and, and how they're so in sync with the game Absolutely. and what they provide uh, for the atmosphere of the game. The band is outstanding to put them up against anybody. I know it. Wow. I'm getting chills watching that. Yes. I'm so proud, y'all. Having having been there a hundred years ago when we had zero band, we 
had zero football team. That's all We've changed. Come so far. Yeah, about to have a stadium. Yes, zero stadium, and now, now look at them. Yeah. Go Jazz. They sound great. Yeah, they do. I really do. I'm telling you, they're a reason to attend a game in themselves. They're, they're that Agreed. good. So let me ask you this: Couldn't I go? Like for one semester, yeah. just, just so that I can play in the band. Uh, right. I mean, I'll be the oldest one there, but that's okay. Shelby waited almost as long for South to get a football team as we did for the MOTs to roll tonight. <laughs> <laughs> if I had my bell, I would ring it right now. <laughs> Speaking of, so just some quick facts. We mentioned this at the beginning of the broadcast, but that was many moons ago. The Mystics of Time is Mobile's largest parading society, and they have two of the most iconic carnival images in Mobile. We already saw the emblem float. That was Father Time. And Dan is the other one, right? And Dan <laughs> Brennan here. That's what's in my notes. That's what Jared printed up for us. Yeah, thank Dan you. Brennan, the second most iconic. iconic. And then just like right below that would probably be Bernadine the Dragon. Yes, yeah. absolutely. So much fun. And uh, part of the fun is watching the kids watch yes. the parade yes okay. oh my gosh look how excited they are so awesome oh my gosh i love the dragon bernadine oh check it wow, out Wow, she's putting on a show for us very we said realistic. it was gonna be lit yes oh my gosh it is lit that's for sure come on look I'm at him i'm not sure what bernadine had for lunch <laughs> <laughs> Bern maybe spicy. some mexican bernadine needs a tom's yeah <laughs> Heads up, here we go. Heads up, they're gonna aim for us. Look, if you can get it from there up to here, you have an arm, and I know this, because I was Grand Marshal today in the MML during the floral parade, I couldn't throw to save my life. So these guys, oh, there you go. Oh, that was a good moon pie. These guys have got arms. Actually, I guess it's been pretty, Pretty uh, conservative right now, right, Tara? They can so get crazy, far. right? Yes, things will get crazy, and <laughs> they will they will have 19 floats tonight. We've already seen float number two with it being Bernadine. They're going to have 45 marshals nice. and then 48 walking associates. They've been parading for 71 years wow. in Mobile. Wow, that's history. Yeah, that's history. Yeah, and we were talking to our guests from the History Museum of Mobile earlier, mm -hmm. and they've got that great exhibition about Mobile Mardi Gras parade through time and remember that 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 exhibition is going to be going on right through the whole Lenten season up until the late April so mm -hmm. if you if you want to learn more about Mobile Mardi Gras even after the parades are over and Fat Tuesday comes and goes yes get down to the History Museum of Mobile located on Royal Street right across from Mardi Gras Park yeah, love for, it. for those who don't know, of course, Easter and Mardi Gras are sort of tied together in terms of timing. Right. And this year we had a much later Mardi Gras. Frequently it doesn't drag on into March. It usually mm -hmm. stays in February. But the reason it's so late, because Easter is later this year. Correct. Very good. A little history lesson on UT44. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Tara. <laughs> history. Mardi Gras 101. No, but it is. You're right. It is interesting. And there are some people that, that don't know. So... You mentioned the kids getting really excited. Of course, we talked with Fairhope Brewing. We had William and his daughter, Mary yes. McCarthy. They said their favorite part of Mobile Mardi Gras is, of course, catching all the throws. They just get excited, get excited about the anticipation of the idea <laughs> of Mardi Gras. And I seeing love all it. The floats kids just love it. Oh, and a matter of fact, uh, hello. Look at our, our Navy this guys folks is hyped. having such a blast. And Navy Week, welcome yep. yes. to know, all of so our great. friends uh, in town. What a wonderful. Uh, you know, a wonderful time to be here to do Navy Week. I think it's not by accident that they come here during Mardi Gras. Right. Hey, well, I'll tell you what, from doing high school football on UTV 44, we've seen this band, and I've seen them for years. They're big, they're loud, they're in sync, they sound great. Woo! And then we see them every year, the Baker High School Band, because Baker itself, the largest school down here along the Gulf Coast, and nice. one of the largest public high schools in the state of Alabama. Excellent. A lot of great musicians, Shelby, to choose from. Absolutely. You know, and I, I'm always amazed by, you know, the band is awesome, but you've got your support, like your your cheerleaders and your flag girls and your the, all the team that makes up the entire band. Yeah. So hats off to these young ladies and young men. I know. Growing up, I always wanted to be a part of the color guard. Yes. But unfortunately, with my sports schedule, I was never able to do it. But I still am amazed. Both the baton twirlers yes. and the color guard flag twirlers. Oh, my Look, goodness. I kept dropping the flag, the gun, the baton, <laughs> everything. I said, forget it. And they just put a trumpet in my hand. I went, okay, I'll play the trumpet. Remember the story that Fanny Flagg told? That she, Fanny was in the, uh, the author now who lives in Fairhope. She was in the Foley High School band. I believe I've got this right. And she was a twirler 
and she twirled it and threw it up and it bounced and hit the prettiest cheerleader in the face and chipped her tooth. Oh, no. <laughs> That's no. a great story, even if it's not true. Yeah, Tranny, she's not here to correct you. Let's go with it. Tranny said uh, it was not a good day in her life because the, the uh, pretty popular girl oh. never really forgave Fanny Flagg for that, but Fanny went on to Fanny her went own on to be fans. okay. Yeah, yeah exactly. she sure did. I bet it helped her. I hope that's in a book. Somewhere. Oh, yeah. <laughs> It'd be I'm a sure it is. Yes, it probably is. All right, looking good, guys. Yeah, we're this, high this school marching band. It looks like a university band, doesn't it? It does. Let's, Let's take a listen. It. Here we go. Drum line is the best. Watch, you know, not to step onto uh, anything weird. Yeah, <laughs> yes. well, I, they all are stepping on something weird. <laughs> now Here they're picking go. it up. There we go. There's okay. the real MVP Good job. of the parade tonight, that young man right there. You there know, you go. I didn't realize because I was not talented musically, unfortunately. I always wanted to learn to play piano, but my cousin was in the band. And he was in symphonic band, mm -hmm. and then he tried out for the marching band, and I'm like, I thought you were already in the band. I didn't understand that oh, there yeah. were two different, and Completely. how yes. you have to, you know, walk. it makes so much sense, though, walking and keeping tune and yeah. staying in rhythm, and keeping especially time. when they start adding those it's dance hard. moves in. It is hard. Wow. Okay. Oh. I'm excited. This is excited. Is this the Speaking Queen's of the float? Children, this is yeah. the Queen's float. Oh, my goodness. Her name is Marion Elizabeth Wacker. She was a graduate of McGill Chulin High School. Now she's at the University of Alabama where she is uh, currently working toward her major in finance, specializing in investment management and banking and financial services. Look how stunningly beautiful she is. You see I her crown right there. Wow. It. Her crown is and all of those little cute. Oh my goodness. She has the cutest uh, crew members there on her float. Her little court. Yeah. That's her yeah. royal retainers, the MOT pages, and oh, yes. her military oh. escorts. I yeah. see the military escort. She's, They're uh, cute as well. The daughter of Johnny and Mary Claire. She says she's honored to represent Father Time's family. Aww. Yes. But she is. What a beautiful night, too. Yes. We can't, we can't oh. emphasize that enough. And Great we, night. And we mentioned there's going to be more than one uh, <laughs> dragon tonight, and here's dragon yes. number two. It's Berna not Bernadine. <laughs> yes. It's her children. And Dean. I almost, uh, had my face taken out there. I yeah, know, that was, Dan. That Thank was a fastball. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Woo. Berna is... and Dean are Mobile's most famous twins. <laughs> they frolic and play in the middle of the streets of downtown Mobile, continuing their sibling rivalry in an effort to gain the favor of their mother, Berna Dean, who we saw earlier in the parade and the attention of the crowds. As mere children, the twins can only blow smoke. They can't blow fire mm. yet, Dan Aww, and Shelby. Oh, my goodness. It's their greatest desire, though, that one day, upon maturity, they will be able to blow fire just like their mother. Well, so we course. saw Berna, yes. and here is now yeah. Dean. And Dean. These, these are impressive, how they're able to move and snake through the entire yep. parade route. They're still waiting on their dragon adolescence, aren't they? <laughs> they sure are. Imagine the engineering that goes in for the, the floats to be able to do this, because frequently we just see the traditional floats that only obviously go in one direction, straight yes. forward. <laughs> Wild and rambunctious, describes Dean. And I like it. I love it. I think this is, I think this is brilliant. And you're right. I mean, having to go from left and right and move all yes. the way, that it, you know, all the different directions it's supposed to move. Speaking of sibling rivalry, you brought a sibling I tonight, did. Shelby. I'm sure y'all didn't have any sort of bickering growing up. <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, we won't go there. No, she's, yeah, she's my assistant uh, and my sister, so I call her my uh, sister. But, <laughs> yeah, her name is Miley, and she loves Mardi Gras just as much as I do. And anytime I need any help or I'm doing anything, she's like, oh, can I tag along? I'm like, sure, absolutely. We love seeing her. Yes, thank you. Thanks for bringing her up, too. Up okay. next on your screen, of course, you're seeing the Elmore County High School Band. And speaking of, she and Miley and I were talking to some of these okay. kids. Okay. 
we saw them as they were getting off the bus. I said, what is ECHS? And they're like, oh, we're Elmore County. We came a long way. I was like, okay. And I was trying to remember exactly how far away it was. But they said they came a long way, and they were excited. You know, and I, this is what I love about Mardi Gras, too. I love to see the local bands, you know, when you see the Bakers and the Williamsons and the Rains and, and all that. That's, that's all well and good. But for them to drive as far as they have yes. and to get here to the city of Mobile, downtown Mobile, which I'm sure is uh, not just a long way, yes. but just this, this is a, yeah. an atmosphere they're never able to enjoy in their uh, in their hometown. It's got to be a big deal for them. Absolutely. And check out how they've decorated their drums with the lights. I love it. How cute. And oh, several of the instruments are decorated. That is awesome. Let's take a listen. coverage of the mystics of time and we're revealing now the super float oh my goodness you have to it's going to take a while before we're able to fit this entire thing in the screen it's oh, the wow. image of course the title float dragons yes. have become an iconic part of the mobile oh, party crawl landscape <laughs> She's since the introduction of bernadine in 1949 this year of course no different emmett the dragon will make his second appearance <laughs> this year is yes. mot's fourth full-length dragon this newly modified float stretches over a hundred feet in length and i'm gonna stop reading so i don't die yeah, yeah. stop <laughs> reading tara look up <laughs> tara oh, took a football ooh. to the face <laughs> I know that didn't feel good, Tara. No, and they're up to our level since they're on the second second floor yep. of the float. Goodness, yeah. that's 100 feet of shock they're and aiming for us. and terror. I think everybody in the super float should be pulled over and arrested. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Somebody... Did you see them taunting us? Yeah, I did. Tell me you saw the taunting. I saw the taunting, but I, what I saw when that, I saw I the mini it. football hit you in the side of the head and you never stop commenting. So good for you. I think my mic Of course, once again, thanks again to Hargrove Controls and Automations. They have the perfect balcony. It's long, but in all honesty, we have a lot of people here with the best robotics. Dan was able to speak with them earlier about what all they're doing in the community. And of course, we have Davidson, who has one of the best programs around. And then another one of our sponsors who makes this 2019 Mardi Gras coverage possible for the entire two weeks that we're able to broadcast right here in the birthplace of Mardi Gras is Navigator Credit Union. They have five branches in Mobile and in Baldwin County. So regardless of where you're watching, they can assist you. And then Shelby's friends at the boot store, they have an array of boots. Not only can they repair your boots, they can give you new boots, or if you're not into boots, they can give you something else. They have a ton of accessories. They, can can y'all hear me? They have a ton of it. There we go. I think one of the beads really knocked the heck out of this little microphone box. But anyway, yeah, our friends at the boot store, they have a ton of accessories. They've got uh, new, you know, Western, they've got work boots, they've got a ton of things that you can choose from. And here's the thing, is that they love to be part of the community and part of Mardi Gras. So I think I'm going to have to switch, uh, to, switch to the microphones. Okay. And while uh, we're handling uh, our technical difficulties, we're going to talk now about, we mentioned it being Navy Week, and we get to listen to the United States Navy, their band. They have one queen, which we already saw, but then four dragons. We've seen three of those tonight. Yep. And they actually have something called a garbage can brigade. I'm interested in seeing what that is all about. One, two, there we go. Okay, now Shelby's back. Thank you, we sorry. 
time out I, for a the, the really thick beads are the ones that um, knocked the microphone wire off yeah. and, and also knocked my nose off, actually. I was going to say, you know, my microphone <laughs> wires can be fixed. <laughs> All right. Down. Okay, I'm going to put put this down so I can catch. Hold on. Once again, the theme is time flies when you're having fun, and we're having one of our first theme floats, one of the board games. Did you ever play Hungry Hungry Hippo? Yes. I always had fun playing that at granny camp with all of my cousins in Georgia. And Hungry Hungry Hippo is the classic game. It was introduced in 1968, and the idea of the game was published in 1967 by toy inventor Fred Crawl, and it was introduced to the world in 1978. The four lovable hippos, did you know they had names? Yes. No, I did not. I did know. Henry, Homer, may have heard of him from The Simpsons, Harry, Harry and, Happy. and Happy. I knew that. Oh my goodness. I can actually sing the commercial, but I won't. <laughs> I'll go ahead, Shelby. Hungry, hungry hippo. <laughs> okay. Instead of Shelby, let's listen now to the Hillcrest Evergreen <laughs> High School marching band. That's probably a good call. <laughs> It's really exciting. Yes, it sure is. And our next float, one of my favorite games, and I actually played the live action version of this board game, Clue. And I was Miss Gold, who I didn't even know was a character. And it's how I learned that Colonel Mustard doesn't have an R in it. it looks like Colonel, but instead it's Colonel. 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 Yeah. Old Colonel Mustard. That's the French pronunciation. <laughs> well, these revelers are having a good time. They sure are. We had they to wait a little bit for, for them, but it's been fun. Is it worth it, Dan? Is it what you expected? Well, I've been to Mystics of Time for, uh, you know, many, many years. This being part of the uh, broadcast is a lot of fun. Thank you to Hargrove for getting us a chance to be here on the second floor balcony overlooking overlooking government and it's uh it's even more exciting do you think those engineers could put do like a plexiglass maybe next then year we wouldn't catch anything you're right <laughs> <laughs> i'm well, thinking i'm thinking wait a second let me think tara caught one in the temple <laughs> never stopped commenting <laughs> shelby caught she's got a mouse I, under I her eye now eye. Yeah. but it's okay it's all part of mardi gras i should have brought my goggles like ariel had last year yeah. you should have oh my gosh danger's got some goggles on camera he's oh. smart he's very smart they can't take their eyes off the prize yeah you're right and the okay. eye our eye is on the prize of the current band Unfortunately, I missed the name of it. They did a great job for us, though. Pensacola High School. Oh, okay, our there you go. Man, our neighbors, our Florida neighbors. Very nice. Good job, guys. Oh, my gosh. I used to love playing Trivial Pursuit. Oh, my goodness. How good are you? I love that. If I were a part of a crew, I would definitely try and aim for any target that someone made, especially on this Trivial Pursuit float as... As Shelby was mentioning, this guy is uh, teasing us here on the front. I'm nervous. I'm not going to lie. I'm nervous. Oh, my. I played Trivial Pursuit on the computer back in the day when my go-to games were the paint, the paint, app. Well, that was before they had apps, and Trivial Pursuit had it on CD-ROM. Yeah, it's like the quarterbacks at the combine it on sure that is. on that float. I think we have some former high school uh, standouts yeah. on that float. Yeah. That if was I do fun. say so myself. My goodness. Woo. Okay. Breathe. Shelby <laughs> survived that one. There was no technical difficulties had after that float. Nope. Oh man. Wilcox Central High School marching band. Look at them. Oh, they showing out now. Yeah, they they got some moves. Yes. Yes. These are, these are the schools I'm talking about that travel a couple of hours to get to Mobile just in anticipation of being in these parades. Some of them are in several parades, but it's just got to be really exciting and a, a kind of a Tara, watershed mark for them to be able to be in a, an event like this. Name that song, guys. The 
jazz band. Jared didn't way. like our singing. Okay. <laughs> Look, everybody's got their hands up, hands up, hands up. Who's next? Oh yeah. Throw me something, Mister. All right, I'm putting my microphone down. I was never good hands at up. this game. You see how the guy's nose is blinking red? That's what happened every time I played. Operation. To operation. Yeah. Heads up here. Outfit. Old doctor's outfit. We're gonna need an operation. I caught some toilet paper. I'm taking that home. <laughs> hey, I'm gonna give you guys a, a tip. Don't be distracted by the frisbees. They throw them and then drill you with a football. Ah, that yeah. That has happened to Darwin and myself a many a time. See, Good you point. just saw it. You just saw the trick. Water on the knee. Have you guys ever had an operation? Speaking of. Whoa! I think I'm gonna schedule one for Monday. <laughs> <laughs> I'm right behind you. I broke my ankle in a lawnmower racing accident. That was on the news and Darwin got it because I flipped over right in front of him. That's a story, a true story from a long time ago. About 2004. Oh my gosh. I remember that. Well, of course. And then she would make it up the stairs oh, no. on her crutches every morning. We were doing mornings on 95 KSJ. And I was like, this girl's pretty tough. <laughs> I had no choice. <laughs> anyway, but uh, no rods or staples or anything like that. It's all good. Dan, you had any operations? I've had no broken bones. Okay. Yay, yeah. That's so good. I, I've been very, very fortunate as far as that. But you know, when you when you sit on the sofa all day, that'll. Oh, hush. You work out. Hush yourself. <laughs> that's Here's the way it works. <laughs> Maybe you can jump in with the Jackson High School marching band. Oh, We've seen cool. them on uh, UTV 44. Yeah, the They've Aggies. Been on a great show. We've seen them. That's right. With We've seen Viger. them play at Viger, mm -hmm. St. Paul's. That game went into triple overtime <laughs> one year. Jackson wow. and Viger. Yes. All right. Which was kind of like what tonight's broadcast was. I feel <laughs> like we're in triple overtime. A little bit. But it's worth it, you know? It, it was worth it. Yeah. It always makes for a great broadcast, much like tonight. Keeping with the theme, time flies oh, yeah. when you're having oh, yeah, fun. And just like that, we're up to Shelby's favorite board game. Whoa, as a child, Monopoly. No. Nope. I'm going to correct you. <laughs> <laughs> That's the game of life, which I'm, I'm fending for my life this right now. throwing so many cheese crackers. It's the crackers. <laughs> <laughs> Holy wow. That I think was I cut about seven across between very crackers. dramatic and very hilarious. <laughs> the cheese crackers are flying. I love it. Wait till you see the behind the scenes look of this stuff. Y'all, this is crazy. <laughs> oh Dan, my goodness. Dan, they're still high. Watch out. Oh. oh my gosh. So Oh my goodness, they're throwing lightning things. What is that? What is it? I don't know. Lightning bolts? What is that? Oh. I thought it was a lightning bug. Yes. It's like gummy rings that these... <laughs> I want all those cheese crackers, y'all. Oh, my goodness. That is... so, so the game of life, it, it simulates a person's travels through life from college to retirement, etc. Bernadine has always wondered why attending a Mardi Gras parade isn't included in this game. Because all mobilians <laughs> know that life is so much better with the MOT parade, right? It sure is. They're still trying. Come on. Come on. for the genuine Joe bathroom tissue. Because, I love that. hey, a little beautiful. fun Mardi Gras fact. I think at home we're out. So here we go, thank you very much. Could Check you take out. this to my wife? Yes. There we go, thank you. Dan, I'm gonna let you pronounce this next band. Oh, it's what? easy. Otagaville. Otagaville. There you go. Yeah, but what she said, what she said. Come on, Otagaville High School Marching Band, doing good. Okay, next up. Look, everybody's going nuts. They sure are. I love it. It's just a constant, almost your ears are ringing from the crowd. Did you say your ears are ringing? 
I did. <laughs> what? I can't hear you. My ears are ringing. This is something that my dad got. It was the first gift Santa ever brought him. Rock'em Sock'em <laughs> Robot. Rock'em Sock'em oh, yeah. Robots. So cute. Oh, here we go. Knock your block off. <laughs> and that's what they're doing now. They're trying to. They sure are. Oh, no. This guy has a tube full of something on the top row. Oh. Right. Interesting. I'd heard that. And then one of our other trivia questions was, what does laissez les bon temps roule mean? It means don't throw those beads directly into my face. <laughs> Jared knows it, our producer. Well, everybody okay. knows that. Come on, Tara. That's, like, that's the yeah. first thing you learn if you're not from Mobile when you get to Mobile. And when you're born here in Mobile, yeah. like right when you're in the hospital with your mama, right after you were born, that's the first thing you learn. First words, most kids say. I feel like I can speak another language when I... Can you spell it, though? L-A-I-S-S-E-Z-L-E-B-O-N-T-E-M-P-R-O-U-L-E-R. And we actually learned that B-O-N and the T-E-M-P, Yes. if one has an S, they both should have an S, or both of them should not have an S. You are like different I'm impressed. Good times is what that means, and that's what we're about to have here. Here's Marty This is... Got the monitor good on that one. He did. I know. I know. Listen, I was concerned that they might be out of throws by the time they got here, but I think they were saving literally everything to pound us with. I think they knew that at some point they were going to come by. Yeah. UTV 44. I think I have a piece of bead dust in my mouth. Something's in there. I yeah. think I have something embedded in my shoulder. Can one of you look? <laughs> I'm kidding. Not really, but um, it's all good. Again, these floats, some of them are so, they're high, so high, they're on our level. level. Yeah. yeah. You know, and it's funny being from this direction, because, like, when Dan and I ride in parades with the radio station, you know, we're down low with a van. Right. And we can only get to the first, like, row, maybe two, three deep uh, right. down low. It's kind of fun seeing them, seeing them get them right to us from up top, but it is a little dangerous if you're not watching. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Everybody on these floats that happens to be on the uh, upper deck, they are zeroing in on... Anybody and everybody that's on a balcony. That's right. We happen yeah. to be. It's a lot one more of those. difficult to throw up than it is to throw down. <laughs> that guy just hang, hung a hula hoop on the on the balcony. Light. Show okay. me that. And that's where we were that's last is. a couple of weeks ago. Friday the we Admiral. broadcast live oh, from that's the Admiral. The Admiral. Okay, yeah. yeah, we did our broadcast Jeff from there. Hung on your uh, microphone. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and shout out to Williamson High School marching band. Mighty Mighty Lions. Yeah, yeah. Way to go, guys and gals. Get it. Get it. Wow. All right. I don't know how to dance like that. No. Oh, I saw you. I saw you at Moe's, one of our guitar vacues, and I would have to say that's <laughs> very <disagree>. true. <laughs> Tara, so sweet. I love her. <laughs> I have a good time. Time flies when I'm dancing. <laughs> But I'm having a good time. Tara, time flies when you're having fun. <laughs> yeah, I always, I, not only during Mardi Gras do I laissez les bon temps roulé, but wherever I am, well, I'm letting the good You know, I, I love our partnership with UTV 44 and NBC 15, and now it's gotten to the point where we have a guitar barbecue at Moe's. Yeah. Tara's there. Yes, I'm there. Hey, so. and they've got open invites. And one day I'm going to fit on that guitar when I'm like, can afford it. Yes, yes. absolutely. <laughs> we have a lot of, a lot of those go to, all the money goes to St. Jude. Always a lot of fun. Yeah. Hey, and if you're just tuning in, we are right in the middle of the Mystics of Time Parade. Thank you so much for watching. This is so much fun. Dan and Shelby from 95 KSJ and iHeartRadio, partners to our wonderful, awesome TV folks here at UTV 44, NBC 15. This is 
The float called Candyland. Did you ever play this game? My brother I and I used yes, to play. Yes, I love this game. Yeah, it's so cute. All right, I'm gonna put my mic down so I can catch. Wow, these frisbees look fancy. They're light up frisbees. Mesmerizing. This one guy has a wrist brace. He's serious about throwing tonight. He's not gonna let a little bit of cramping get in his way. Let's read about the Candy Lamb float. It's known that King Candy has a huge crush, actually, on Bernadine, and he's waving his way through the streets of Mobile trying to gain an audience with the MOT matriarch. Oh. The first part of his journey included navigating through the Candy Cane Forest, <laughs> summiting Gumdrop Mountain. Queen Frostine is furious about his actions and wonders <laughs> if he will ever return to her. Candy Lamb is in all panic, awaiting the return of their king, but he's, of course, not coming back without Bernadine. You got that right, and watch out for that Queen Frostine. She is <laughs> mean, I understand. He better watch out. He's being a scoundrel. <laughs> he better be, I know Mardi Gras, not a time when you overly misbehave, but you want to have a good time, and I think everybody here is having a good time tonight. Oh, yeah, yes. And, and again, it's really a cool perspective to look down on the crowd, see how big the crowd is here on government. So and when you consider just how many miles this thing stretches, this entire downtown Mobile, what you're seeing right here is a tiny portion oh, yeah. of the crowd. That's right, right. And the parade route. And, and I tell you, going uh, going through the route, it is, it's amazing, you know, it's just amazing because it's just person after person after person. I mean, you can right. see them right there. They just love it. It's just joy on their faces, yeah. you know? And some people, it really is their big time of the year, their one time of the year. Yeah, and of course it's a big production. We already see how many hundreds of pounds of beans have been thrown and caught. Yes. But even more so on the streets. So the Eco team is actually looking for volunteers who are willing to help clean up the city of Mobile after these parades. And Excellent. then I don't know if you guys have seen Public works, but guys, they're incredible after these parades. And shout out to the Calhoun marching band, by the way. Calhoun County came down for this. Yep, that's a nice little trip too, huh? Okay. Yikes. Uh oh. I used to cheat Here at go. a game growing up, and it just so happened to be Battleship. My younger brother didn't know that I could see where he was placing his ships, so somehow I always got his right away. Direct hit every time. It's a fun game. It is a fun game. You got You got to stay focused. Who like we are right battleship. now. Yeah, this of course dates back to a paper and pencil game during World War I. And through the last century, kids have been guessing their way through minefields attempting to find the enemy ships. MOT is paying tribute tonight to the game and, of course, to the U.S. Navy in right. this fun-loving way with it being Navy. Very good. Deal. You saved my battleship. <laughs> I love that. Oh, sassy. Here we go, here comes the BC Rain High School Marching Band. Go Rain! I mean, just growing up in Mobile, these kids in these bands, with Mardi Gras is just a, it's just part of the culture and it's a part of their experience from the time they're knee high. Now they get a chance to be in the parades and I know it's a blast for them, but it, it I mean, it's just, it's just Mobile as it gets. tonight, but it looks like we're going to have a, a big change in the direction of the weather beginning tomorrow afternoon from everything I'm hearing from NBC 15, so you all get ready for that, but a warm and pleasant night on the streets of downtown Mobile this evening. He's got, um, he's got a chicken. I would like for someone to throw me a chicken, please. Yeah, Darwin caught one, actually, <laughs> last know, night. I remember. A squeaky chicken. Last year, yeah. Oh, last night. Here we go. Oh, thank you. Peanuts. Awesome. This is the 
chest floats, and it's considered by some as one of the most sophisticated games of all time. So, of course, MOT had to include it in their parade. It brings the board game to Carnival Royalty. The queen is the most beloved figure, both of the chess and carnival worlds, because of their beauty and power. The queen's guard will be keeping a close watch on her movements throughout the night and are willing to sacrifice themselves for her honor. You know, Dan will do that for Shelby. No, we're Luckily, doing that here. For <laughs> yeah, for the broadcast. <laughs> Luckily for MOT, there are so many marshals that they could lose a few, and no one would even miss them. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> and these are some of our friends. They've actually been a part of the coverage for Mardi Gras, the Excelsior Band. Oh, yeah. We've yes. had them up here as our musical guests, and the um, under... Underhill Family Hill Orchestra. Family Orchestra did a great job. They had to play quite a few songs. Yes, tonight. yes they did, but they had they did a fabulous they had several job. Several in the um, hopper ready to go. Okay. It was kind of funny because you could tell they had no idea. Of course, we were waiting for the parade to come. Yeah. And they were like, "Uh, we got to play another song." Oh, they were they were fun. But they loved it. They had it. plenty. Yeah. They loved it. Oh, watch out! Here we go. It's Mouse Trap. Did you guys ever see this movie? Actually, a really good movie. Yes. As well. All for the cheese. Oh, there's some ramen for you. Thank you. Shelby wanted ramen. Thank you. And the MOT's delivered. Hey, Mary Helen. Lunch. Hey, Mary Helen. <laughs> hey, MOT's. Mousetrap, of course, a game of patience and love. We were very patient tonight, so it's very fitting that they would have Mousetrap here. Dexterity skills that are all necessary when wrangling all of the Queen's royal pages. First introduced in 1963. No one has yet to build a better mousetrap. I loved that game when I was a kid. Did you? Oh, yeah. Just very visually pleasing. A lot of fun. And That's the jukebox. That's, what I, that's the way I saw. But what's oh, funny no. is all these years of doing high school football, and <laughs> it takes a parade for our monitors to get hit over and over again by They've been hammered. Some footballs. It sure does. They ma they're made out of steel. Well, I'm, I'm glad during the season they're not throwing toward the booth there. I know. My Just a parade. But I did get taken out this year. Do you remember during the Sarah Land? Sarah Land, St. Paul's. Yeah. yeah. Laid out. Completely laid out. But it's all a part of it. Head on a swivel. Much like in Mardi Gras. Yeah, that was careful. beer pong, so not necessarily ah. a board game, but <laughs> somewhat of a board game. Yeah, right. I, re pong. I recognize the little cups. Yeah, mm -hmm. the legendary John Belushi brings MOT back in time to its college days. Because I've always said that Mardi Gras crews are much like, you know, fraternities and sororities for adults. It's fun. And kind instead of, of date parties, yep. you go to the balls. That's right. That's the Olympia Brass Band, and it's back up. Hargrove controls and automation. What a wide balcony, and it's really the perfect place. Happy Mardi Gras, North Carolina and Kansas. They have family there that are tuning in to watch the coverage today. And what's this float? It's wrist, which is what we're doing once again with our lives <laughs> yeah. to bring you this coverage. Boy, if you're down the parade route, or if you're heading that way, and you know what? Get ready. Much like time flies when you're having fun, all good things must come to an end, and that's yeah. where we are right now for just the parade for MOTs. But guess what? We're not quite done. We're still going to um, tag some things out. We're fi fixing our uh, bumps and bruises, Shelby, here. And as I said before, the Mobile Public Works Department does a great job of cleaning up. And once again, if you want to volunteer with the Eco Team, they would be happy to have you. What a great parade. There was such a turnout, both with fans and parade goers down below in downtown. And then we wow. had a ton of friends and family here on the Hargrove Controls and Automation. Dan, yes. first parade up here yeah. broadcasting. It's, yes. it's difficult. More difficult than football. What, what's your take? I, I am yearning for a football game. <laughs> <laughs> because it's not interactive. The football game, we get to sit up there, watch these great young, talented kids play. Yes. But on uh, this one, we're doing play-by-play. -play, uh, yeah. And at the same time, we got to be a little heads up, right? right? Yes. Do you see my black eye? <laughs> <laughs> and, and you notice I'm using this microphone because the other one is knocked off. Yes. But you know what? This was so much fun. And really, you have to just kind of stay on your toes. Mm -hmm. You only 
always do, but you can get the best throws if you just put your hands up, right? You sure do. <laughs> and on top of the MOT, he's doing a great job for us tonight. Fairhope Brewing yes. doing a great job. Your musical guest. Yes, the Underhill Family Orchestra were fantastic. And then Dan, of course, had the opportunity to speak with our friends at Hargrove Controls and Automation. Yeah, we talked about Best Robotics, and we also talked to our friends from the uh, History Museum of mm -hmm. Mobile. And uh, don't forget about that exhibition, Parade Through Time. Uh, you can kind of relive Mardi Gras all over again at the uh, Museum of History here in Mobile on Royal Street right up until Easter Sunday. Yes, and then speaking of Sunday, we're going to have a break tomorrow, but we're going to be back on Monday. Special time, though, it's going to be 7.30 that we're going to be bringing you the Mystics and the Order of Doves. So once again, that's a two for one. So we want you guys to stay tuned. Darwin will be back joining us. Maybe Shelby and Dan will come and have some fun just on looking as parade goers. I don't know. We <laughs> loved having you guys. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for your interviews. And thank you for tap dancing with us as we fade away. I love it. Did I bring in goggles. Did your time fly tonight? Yes, ma'am. Well, time did fly. Thanks for missing some time. And a lot of Mobile is still going to have an opportunity to enjoy uh, this parade as it continues through the city streets.